guys. Welcome to Game On. Uh, as you know, or maybe you don't, uh, we are a YouTube channel dedicated to tabletop gaming in all its myriad and entertaining forms. So uh, this week, Justin, you know me and my sort of obsession with technical realism? I have another... I have another bone to pick with many systems on the subject of armor. How it works and how it should work and why it doesn't work in, in a variety of games. I'm not going to pick on any systems in particular. Okay. Um, but the way that armor is treated in a variety of systems, it, a lot of games do one of two things. Number one, the classic sort of D&D &D scenario, which is armor makes you harder to hit. Mm. Um, now, I've gone into in the past, you know, the skill set problems with that, because actually being encumbered by big, heavy pieces of metal that impede your movement don't make you harder to hit. And I know, I know everybody says, well, that just means you're harder to hit for effect. Mm. You've been hit, but it doesn't do anything. Putting that aside, not going to rehash that stuff. Other game systems have armor work like point value, mm -hmm. which works great for vehicles or me mechanical things where armor is just a thickness of material that gets chipped away over time and then, you know. It's uh, a soak value. Yeah, yeah. But with a living organism wearing armor... That is not how it works. Okay. Um, body armor, whether we're talking about medieval plate mail or modern Kevlar, neither makes you harder to hit, either for effect or not, nor does it have a point value that depletes in a linear fashion. Hmm. Okay? There are some exceptions to that, like the ceramic trauma plates and modern body armor do fracture if they've been hit hard enough to break the plate and after that then that plate is no longer as effective but it's not just it's worth 10 points and then it's worth nothing right okay. your armor doesn't evaporate when it takes damage um likewise somebody can hit you wearing when you're wearing plate mail they can absolutely hit you and hurt you, mm -hmm. but you just won't be hurt as much. Mm. The type of damage that you'll receive is both different in quality and quantity hmm. than it would be if you were struck by somebody walloping you with a sword, right? <laughs> like, if you're wearing plate mail, it turns a sword hit into a punch mm -hmm. or a being hit with a baseball bat, mm -hmm. right? And it still hurts. Absolutely. It still does <laughs> damage to you, and if you get hit enough times wearing plate mail, you will be injured and potentially incapacitated. But short of somebody getting in between the plates and stabbing you, the armor does reduce the amount of damage that you take without reducing it to zero, right? And mm -hmm. that's, that's sort of the, the fundamental problem with D&D. Armor is completely effective or completely ineffective. Okay. With, with the exception of a few special case rules in D&D &D where you might take half damage for things. Mm -hmm. It is an all or nothing proposition, which is exactly how armor does not work. Okay. Uh, likewise, in a, in a modern setting like cyberpunk, you're wearing a sheet of points. Mm -hmm. and somebody shoots your points to zero and now you're not wearing it anymore also not how armor works right your your bulletproof vest doesn't fall off after it's stopped four bullets um and it doesn't become zero effectiveness after four bullets either okay so how do you figure out how armor should work well, uh, I don't know if there's a way to figure it out, but there are, there's ways to sort of think about it in terms of if you're struck by a melee weapon 
wearing chain mail, plate mail, whatever, you know, fantasy setting type of armor. Um, what it does is prevent penetration wounds, mm -hmm. slashing or stabbing or that type of, of penetration wound. Mm -hmm. And it turns it into an impact. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the type of weapon, how big a weapon it is, how hard it's swung, how strong the wielder is, more or less impact may make it through that material. Um, but it's not going to puncture yeah. the armor under mo most circumstances. Uh, ranged weapons might be a different story. Mm -hmm. You know, an arrow or a crossbow bolt can absolutely penetrate traditional sort of antique armor types. But, um, so that's how I think of armor and that's how I think that it should be dealt with. Um, that it should convert slashing damage to bludgeoning damage in D&D &D terms. Okay. And reduce it by some some measurement. Okay. Um, you could say maybe it ta you take half damage and it's bludgeoning damage. Okay. All right. Um, in cyberpunk, and oh, you ahead. don't you don't think that this this is just something that the armor because there's already a feat that lets you do that, but you think that the armor should just do that natively? Well, yeah, because how do you wear armor more effectively? Okay. Right, I, I I was just making yeah yeah making well, and, clear, and, and that's kind of my the the point I was making. There are certain specific circumstances under which D and D accidentally makes armor more realistic, but how it goes about that is a completely nonsensical way in mm. my way of thinking. Like somebody doesn't just get better at wearing armor. Yeah. Right. Like if you put on a suit of armor, you've put on a suit of armor. Presumably, if you put it on correctly, it's going to protect you exactly as much as it would put protect the next person who put on the same suit of armor. Mm -hmm. Now, how much damage you take from somebody walloping you with it, that'll change situationally by the weapon that I wield. Yeah. Right? If I stab you with a stiletto, the chances of that tiny little blade puncturing your plate mail... And again, unless I wiggled it through a seam someplace, very unlikely that you're going to take any damage whatsoever because there's no impact associated with stiletto. But if I hit you with a claymore, which has got however many pounds of 10, 15 pounds of steel weight on a four foot long arc, yeah, right? That's going to wham that's gonna do gonna some damage you over absolutely <laughs> it's gonna dent your armor it's gonna you're gonna feel the impact in it, it might even break bones underneath you get your armor. bells wrong from that yeah so so yes you should take some damage no matter how effective you you think your armor is if you're standing there and somebody slaps you up the side of the head with a battle axe and yeah it's gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get hurt yeah so and and, and modern body armor is kind of the same way Right? Um, if you get shot wearing Kevlar or, or any type of, uh, you know, ceramic plate body armor, it's designed to convert penetration wound damage into, dis it disperses impact, mm -hmm. right? That's what body armor does. And so you don't get a hole in you, you get a dent in you. <laughs> <laughs> you get a couple of broken ribs. Absolutely, absolutely. And so short of some sort of armor piercing projectile of which you can, you know, whatever game systems allow for that sort of thing or have that built in, yeah, it's fine. Um so and your 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 armor could reduce its effectiveness over multiple hits mm -hmm. because it starts to get broken down by impacts, but it never ever would go to zero. Mhm. Mm Right, it just that's not a realistic scenario. Your Kevlar vest will still offer some protection, even after it's been hit fifty times. Um, it won't be quite as effective, yeah, but it will still be effective at dispersing impact, which is what you want it to do. Now, how much impact? I mean, that's physics, and like I got my my. Uh, 
visual aids here. Oh, okay. This, this is a book on, on swords, uh, historical types of swords. Okay. Um, and it gives things like how much, how heavy is the, the blade, right? And that'll tell you how much impact, right? Yeah. That it, that it causes. So you can figure out a sword that's three feet long and weighs 10 pounds. It's going to, you can, you can you have, depending on how much math you want to do, you can figure out an arc. Uh, and you can say transit time. It takes it one second to swing the, the sword from start to finish. Weighs 10 pounds. The tip speed of that is the, the sort of the radius of that arc, right? Okay. Or, the, or the circumference of that arc. So you can actually figure out the physics of how much impact that sword makes. Assuming it doesn't penetrate armor, which it wouldn't, right? I don't care how hard you swing a sword. If you hit plate mail with it, it's not going to, yeah. you know. You can actually do the, the math on it, or you can make approximations for the sake of simplicity, which is what most people will do, mm -hmm. unless they're math geeks like me. Um, likewise, bullets, right? Bullets. I've shown this book before. And Artel Surian makes that. Yes, they... Uh, or they did, at they, least. They published this many, many moons ago in, in the early days of, of their gaming career. Um... And then, you know, there are stuff like this that, that are published that give ballistics tables like how heavy is a bullet, how fast does it travel, and you can figure out exactly how much impact. And honestly, the, the breadth, the difference between different types of ammunition is bigger and broader even than what most game systems allow for. Okay. Um, because a, like a machine gun, a 50 caliber machine gun, has something like 10 or 15 times the, the amount of energy delivered that a handgun does. But typically systems don't allow for 15 times as much bullet damage as yeah. from one to another. Be that as it may, you can, you can kind of get a, a feel for the scale. And you can even calculate how much a sword hit does versus how much a bullet does in terms of the actual physics of it. Get it into that if you want to, but for art purposes of armor, figure out okay, well, how much how much points of damage should an arm should a ballistic armor stop? For a low velocity bullet like a handgun, it may stop almost all of it, right? Okay. Because there just wasn't that much energy that hit you to begin with, and so dispersal of that energy is not that hard. Yeah. Um. Whereas a high velocity, like a rifle bullet or a machine gun bullet that is traveling many times faster has considerably more energy impact, it will transfer more of that energy to the human body when it stops, even if it doesn't penetrate the armor. Mm -hmm. And it might, because high velocity bullet bullets will penetrate more effectively than low velocity, right? A rifle bullet will go through armor much more than a... A pistol bullet will. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> Even if they do roughly the same amount of energy, mm -hmm. um, the fact that the, the projectile is smaller and moving faster, it's the difference between being hit with the pencil, the pointy side of a pencil, or being hit with the eraser side of a pencil. Mm. Pencil is the same size either way, yeah. but how it feels when it hits you is very different. Right? Okay. So... But you can calculate that stuff, and you can say, okay, well, maybe you're, for the purposes of something like cyberpunk, maybe your your type of body armor stops the first five points or six points of damage, and transfers any remaining damage to the interior target. But then the next go round, um, same thing, or maybe you say your for every five shots, your armor stops. You lose one point off of the total that it stops. Right? Okay. Say it stops five points of damage for the first five shots, and then for the second five, it only stops four points of damage because it's starting to lose structural integrity. And okay. it, it deteriorates over time. So you do allow for armor getting old. Mm -hmm. But it would never go to zero. And it would not drop off quickly. And it would not all get used up on the first shot, right? 
if I shoot you with a rifle, it's not your armor isn't going to stop all of it, but your armor isn't going to evaporate when it hits either. So, and now, if we're talking like futuristic sci-fi energy weapons, maybe you can make an argument that the armor evaporates, right? Uh -huh. Vaporized with a laser, sure. But how often does that happen in games? Traveler. Man. I'll let you work out the armor rules in Traveler if you want to. But I like the armor rules in Traveler. <laughs> Fair enough. How does it work? Uh, it's Well, because combat is so quick. It Basically, it's a soak value. Uh-huh. Uh, and there's armor-piercing rounds you can use against it. It soaks up so many rounds, and then basically... You transfers can, the rest? Yeah, and and transfers the rest, and because combat is only, what, 10, 20 seconds at most, mm -hmm. uh, you can... Just at the end, you just fix it. You know, you just repair it. Right. It, like, it never goes to zero. It always stays the same. Put the trauma plate back in? Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it sounds to me like Traveler, and, okay, blanket statement, there are systems that deal well with armor. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of them don't. <laughs> so, Traveler seems to have a reasonably realistic way of dealing with armor, and I'm sure there's other systems that do too, and I would just like to see more systems treat it kind of that way, yeah. where it is not perfect, and it is not consumable in the traditional sense like yeah. armor doesn't just go away mm -hmm. and it doesn't stay ever present and it is not 100 percent effective and it's not 100 percent ineffective right it's physically there it's always a factor yeah so anyway yeah that's again me i'm hyper focused on sort of the mathematic, scientific, realistic details of stuff, and you can <laughs> definitely get bogged down and, and screw up the pace of a game by trying to deal with that too much. Yeah. But I don't think that this is that cumbersome to have it just okay. be gradual that way. Well, would you would you be willing to take on the task of making something that could be free for everyone to know how to quickly do it? Um, sure. Although... You'd have to have the asterisks of saying, look, you're going to have to deal with this. You're going to have to key it to your system because mm -hmm. the damage rules for every system are different. Like the point scale values are different. But yeah, I basically would just have a 100 drooping down to, I don't know, maybe 50% effective would be the minimum. Okay. And just have it decline over an interval that that is proportionate to the number of times that the armor functions to stop hmm. and absorb energy right um okay whether it's plate mail that gets dinged up and 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 creased and maybe even punctured in places from being you know hit over and over and over again and that armor needs to be hammered out and patched or it'll be less effective to again modern body armor with a trauma plate and or Kevlar weave that sections need to be replaced or it'll only be half effective. Okay. So yeah, I could create uh, quick and dirty rules for that sort of thing that's universally applicable, I think. Sure, why not? People might want that now that they hear all about it. All right, uh, Justin just put me on the spot to create some content for you guys and I will attempt to do so. Cool. Okay, yeah. Well, if you like this kind of content, don't yeah. forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys like to see me geek out on stuff like this and get bunged up because games that are completely fictitious and content don't aren't perfectly scientifically realistic in application, yeah, so I just told you why. But, yeah, if you like it, <laughs> click and, and subscribe and give us feedback and, and tell me to shut up if you want to. It's fine. I'm Justin. I'm Matt, and I'm... Yeah, I have a problem. And uh, don't forget to game on. Thanks, guys. Game up.